Now, when you're winging your way across the country on an IFR flight plan, it's always nice to know how low you can safely fly on the airway. And that information is given to you right on your IFR low altitude in route chart as an altitude called the MEA, or minimum in route altitude. When you're flying the airway, you want to make sure that you don't hit anything and that you can navigate. So the minimum in route altitude is the lowest published altitude, which gives you these two things. Number one, because you don't want to hit anything, the MEA meets obstacle clearance requirements. And we'll talk about those in a minute. And number two, the MEA assures acceptable VOR navigation signal coverage. So let's take a look at an example. Let's start out from GJT, which is Grand Junction Regional Airport up here, and fly via the Grand Junction VOR JNC and Victor 187 southbound to Manka intersection, then Victor 211 eastbound to Durango VOR DRO and then Durango Airport. And let's take a look at what your minimum in route altitudes would be. Specifically, you're looking for the highest MEA that you find on that route between Grand Junction and Durango Airport. So start up here at the top at Grand Junction VOR. And as you follow Victor 187 southbound, what you're doing is looking for an altitude on the airway. And sure enough, you find one right here, 15,000 feet. This altitude with the asterisk, the 12,100 feet, is the minimum obstruction clearance altitude, not the MEA, and we'll talk more about that in a minute. 15,000 feet MSL is the minimum in route altitude on the initial stretch of your airway, and that will guarantee you both obstruction clearance and usable VOR navigation signals. Now, 15,000 feet is really going to be pushing it for a lot of general aviation aircraft. And that's a good reason for taking a close look at the IFR chart before you start out on a trip and making sure that the MEA on the airway, particularly if it's in a mountainous area, is not going to be above the capability of your aircraft. Now, as you go a little bit more to the south on that airway, notice that you get to an intersection called Herm. And notice that there are little, what I call, dinner plates or fence posts across the airway on either side of Herm intersection. That is an altitude change point, and it's the signal to you that you have a change in the charted altitude at that intersection. You're going to have a change in either the minimum in route altitude, the MEA, the minimum obstruction clearance altitude, the MOCA, that's the one that had the asterisk that we saw, or the maximum authorized altitude called the MAA. And as I said, we'll talk more about the MOCA and the MAA in a little bit. So let's take a look to the south of Herm intersection and see what happens to the altitudes. And as you follow Victor 187 down to the south, you find your minimum in route altitude again, and the MEA remains at 15,000 feet MSL. The altitude with the asterisk, however, the MOCA, and that altitude is the one that changes at Herm. So let's continue southbound on that airway. What you're looking for now is Manka intersection, where you switch over to Victor 211 going to the east into Durango. Again, Manka has those dinner posts on dinner plates on either side of the intersection to indicate an altitude change. And the minimum in route altitude on Victor 211 has gone down to 11,300 feet, and that altitude applies all the way into the Durango VOR.
So the highest minimum in route altitude on the entire route of flight is the 15,000 feet MSL that you found before and after Herm intersection. Now the minimum in route altitude will be different on different airways and also on different segments of airways as we saw. And the MEA depends also on what the terrain is like and how far apart the navigation stations are. Take a look now at this chart at Victor 16 as it goes eastbound out of the Big Spring Vortex and take a look at Weep intersection. Notice on the west side of Weep intersection the minimum in route altitude is 4,200 feet. At Weep intersection, you've got those little dinner plates again, or lines across the airway, indicating that you have an altitude change. On the east side of Weep intersection, the minimum in route altitude is 4,500 feet. So suppose you're flying exactly at the minimum in route altitude of 4,200 feet eastbound towards Weep intersection. That really isn't likely, but let's say you're trying to stay below icing conditions, and so the controller has given you the lowest altitude they can on this stretch of airway, the MEA of 4200. You may be asked, if no minimum crossing altitude, or MCA, is specified, and we'll talk more about MCAs later, what is the lowest altitude for crossing a fix beyond which a higher minimum in route altitude applies? At WEEP, you have the two dinner plates showing that the MEA changes and it goes up from 4,200 to 4,500 feet. There is no minimum crossing altitude at WEEP, so you're level at 4,200 feet eastbound, and as soon as you pass WEEP, you start your climb and climb to the new higher minimum in route altitude of 4,500 feet. The lowest altitude for crossing a fix beyond which the airway has a higher minimum altitude is the minimum in route altitude at which you approach the fix, providing they don't specify any minimum crossing altitude. Now something you'll see on some routes are airway altitudes in blue followed by a G, like right here on Victor 288, just west of Fort Bridger VOR, FBR, in Wyoming. Just when you think you have it all figured out, the FAA throws something else in. So, you have an MEA of 16,000, another MEA in blue with a G of 12,000, and a minimum obstruction clearance altitude, the altitude with the asterisk, of 11,600. But all this G means is that if you are using an IFR certified GPS, you can use this lower altitude as your MEA. And in a lower performing airplane, the ability to fly this airway at 12,000 feet using your GPS instead of the 16,000 you'd have to be at to receive VOR signals for the entire route may let you use this airway when you otherwise could not. Now we've been talking about the lowest altitude you can fly, but in reality you very seldom will fly at the actual minimum in route altitude. The reason is that air traffic control is not only concerned with keeping you from hitting the terrain, but also with keeping aircraft from running into each other. To do that, they assign you altitudes, and the altitudes they normally assign are based on the good old hemispherical altitude rule. In the low altitude structure, it's odd thousands north and east, and even thousands south and west. Now, some airways have a maximum authorized altitude, and MAA, as well as minimum altitudes. That's because there may be restrictions such as airspace limitations, traffic conflicts, or technical issues such as frequency interference from 
other ground-based facilities. Here's an example from a low altitude chart in Florida. On this route, route segment south of Jacksonville, Florida, the maximum authorized altitude on Tango Route 210 is 9,000 feet. You'll find that MAAs are now much more common due to the flexibility of today's navigation systems and more direct routings. But even though things are changing rapidly, it still is a good thing to know just what those numbers on the airways mean.